All right, hello, welcome to the weather update. It's 5 p.m. on the 18th of March on this very, very rainy day. Uh, pretty steady rain across areas, some of it heavy at times. And there are actually some thunderstorms actually just offshore here. Uh, uh, just offshore, uh, we have some pretty strong thunderstorms that are just south of Long Island now uh, that are not probably not going to affect us. We'll have to look at the this radar here, which we know stinks. The National Weather Service radar, which is just awful. Not even working. So this radar is just a joke. It's just a joke. We have no National Weather Service radar. It just doesn't exist there. Well, there it is, finally. Um, but it's, it's awful. We still have to find a better radar site uh, because the summer is coming and we're going to have to track thunderstorms and this is just not going to cut it. Um, we're going to have to find another radar site. And no, I'm not going to pay for it. That's ridiculous. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is some pretty intense uh, storms here. Well, we, you know what? Just forget about the National Weather Service radar. We'll use this radar instead. <laughs> That's all. Weather, the Weather Service radar is useless. All right, it's useless. You can't use it for anything. Um, because this is the four. I, you know, it's annoying. They had to change this radar and show the forecast. It looked like this this heavy stuff was over parts of southern New Jersey. Now it's out over the ocean right now. Uh, but there is lightning with it. Uh, if you take a look here, you'll see we have lightning strikes uh, that are going on in these uh, storms here. Uh, so, yeah, uh, not surprised that we're seeing a little convection across our area today. Uh, let's look at the current conditions around outside right now. Uh, temperatures on Long Island are in the mid-40s. Uh, mid-40s in Jersey as well. Northeast winds, some of them kind of gusty, 20 mile and some 20 mile an hour gusts here. You'll notice it's much warmer as you head south into the southern part of New Jersey, south well, south of Atlantic City, the well south, the, the, the real southern part. Uh, and they're in that warm, humid air, 50, uh, temperature 52, dew point 52. So that's what's helping to fuel uh, these uh, thunderstorms. They've got a lot of humidity going on. Uh, speaking of that, uh, we are going to move down south where they have a number of severe uh, warnings going on. Again, severe th a tornado watch, severe thunderstorm warning, and a couple of tornado warnings also. It looks like one around Winston-Salem uh, and another around... Uh, Charlotte, so this is in North Carolina uh, that we're seeing some of the severe weather. And also, tornado watches are in effect for parts of the uh, coast of North Carolina. It's the same system that, that brought the severe weather yesterday. Uh, and you can see how warm it is in this warm sector here, 77, dew point 65. Uh, we have severe thunderstorm watches, tornado watches in effect for this area. Wow, look at how hot it is here. 90 degrees in Melbourne right now in Florida. That is pretty hot for March. Uh, so that is uh, real, some heat right there. I think that's a red flag warning that they have in effect right there. Uh, uh, that's very, very hot. Uh, so we do have the severe weather still going on. We can overlay the radar uh, onto this. This is the other r radar we can look at here. Uh, and you can see these severe storms there, right there. But I'd rather look at them on the AccuWeather radar. So let me close this up. Let me get the AccuWeather radar back uh, so we can look at this and go down to the south into North Carolina where this line is now moving through Greensboro, Winston-Salem. Um, these look like some pretty severe thunderstorms here. Could be some tornadoes uh, involved with these storms. Um, and got another one around Charleston. So you can see the where the severe weather is here. Uh, the storm, this, this, this system is still causing severe weather. And then look at this. Uh, this is the whole part of the system here i mean look at this some of this heavy rain it's all throughout the northern part of the system a lot of heavy rain uh a lot of heavy rain out there for sure um so that's uh that uh, uh, this is again very uh a large system uh and uh we may have us ending as snow as you know uh so um let's go look at the models for our we're just going to focus on our area through the weekend all right we'll go to the h triple r model all right i'm not going to even look at the total accumulated precepts anymore because we we have an idea of what we're going to be getting here between one and two inches of rain uh perhaps more uh so you can see that rain the rain just continues through the night maybe a little break then it gets heavy again around midnight um 
and then you have that little ending of ending at snow perhaps Friday morning and then it gets on out of here uh, so you'll notice here that uh, we'll look at the accumulation for snowfall and it's giving some parts of the area a couple of inches. Like I said, we've seen this. It, 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 we don't know exactly where it's going to happen, but there's the potential for an inch or two of snow uh, on the tail end of this uh, as an end. That's for sure. This is the HRRR model. Let's go look at the NAM 12. Uh, so you can see here's the NAM 12. And again, you can see what happens here. When that precipitation gets heavy, uh, the NAM 12 is saying that we're going to have a burst of heavy snow uh, uh, because you're going to have probably a little dynamic cooling going on early Friday morning, like overnight, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and there could be a burst of heavy snow at the end. So with that, I expect the total NAM totals to be a little higher on the snowfall, and they are. Uh, they give parts of Suffolk County up to five inches of snow. Uh, this is the NAM model. All right, so you can see how this variation in the models here, and it's it's very hard to predict exactly what's going to happen. Um, um, that that that's quite a bit um, that the NAM would be saying that that would happen, uh, but the potential is there that it could happen, um, and that is quite impressive to say the least. I mean, when you go back to the NAM here and look at this. Uh, back this up in that in that overnight period you see that is quite a heavy burst you can see that yellow turns to blue dark blue uh, right over Long Island there so I'm wondering if we're going to see uh, quite a bit more snow than uh, some of the other some uh, some of us are expecting uh, it's possible it's possible uh, if everything sets up right uh, if we go and we look at the F channel on this which is what we're going to do next Let's start with the 700. All right. You can see what what develops around right around that time. I'm using this to show you the colder air that works in, in at that time. Let's go to the 850 because I prefer the 850. Um, you can see, look at all that lift there going on, all that energy that... Uh, This is this is where the areas of heavy precip are, where there there are a lot of tight lines. So, um, and you see it working just as the cold air works in. So this is this is what we have to watch out for here. All right. Um, um, get the 850 temps are. Let's see if we can get the F850 temperatures here. This is the other one we could use. All right. So this will also show you where that line is. And see that line drop over us just before the precip exit so it goes below freezing at the a50 millibar altitude which means that the precip would change to snow at that time uh, before cutting off all right now the h triple r doesn't have that uh, doesn't have that uh, ability it doesn't have any 50 temperature uh, to look at here now of course i lean more toward the h triple r because it's a little more of a a faster updating model than the NAM. But yeah, I don't think this does 850 temperatures. It does not do 850 temperatures. Uh, we don't have that availability. Um, all right, we'll look at another model. Uh, uh, well, I usually don't use these, but we'll look at the GFS. You know, it's a low resolution. The, it doesn't really give us... It's mainly the NAM that's saying that we're going to see a lot of snow. The other models are not saying that. Um... Total snowfall for the GFS is nothing. Um, so that's, uh, we can also look at the RGM. All right, that's the 18Z. I don't really have enough of that in yet. Um, this is the 12Z RGM. It's not really set. Odds are we're not going to see it, but for some reason the NAM is the one model that is saying that we are. Um, so we're going to have to keep an eye on this and see what happens. Because it's, it's literally a difference of a couple of degrees, really, and where the heavy precip sets up. Um, if we go and we go back to this, I guess what we can do here, and then it is around 5, so we are about 20Z. We're right about here. The triple R is pretty close to its presentation. Um, look at the NAM 12, and it's a little heavier 
And the M's 12 is a little heavier. I, there's also the NAM 3, which I don't like using too much, but this is, this is the highest resolution version of the NAM that we can use here. Uh, and I use this more in the summer for severe weather. Uh, but you can see it's overdoing the heavy rain a little bit on Long Island. All right. And you can see what happens. It kind of just pops this other low along the front with heavy showers and thunderstorms just offshore around midnight. And then at the tail end, you get that snow. Um, now, we can also do this total snowfall on this. Now, this one, this is interesting. This one is not as high. So, excuse me. Uh, I still don't think we'll see more than an inch or two, and only on grassy services, I, if, if, it's, if that even happens. I really don't. So I don't think any advisories will be needed for um, tomorrow morning. But be prepared. You might wake up, and you might see the ground white. Uh, that is a possibility. Um, that is definitely a possibility. So let's go look at the... And, and it's just because I just don't see the cold air coming in fast enough to... Uh, to change it all quick enough um, for that to happen. So we're going to look at the HRRR 18Z run. You'll see what I mean here. So you can see here, here we are at 09Z. It doesn't really get below freezing. Until, it's, it, it, it basically, it doesn't really get below freezing until until things start tapering off uh, and get light, getting lighter as far as the, inner, the, 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 the precipitation goes. Um, as far as tomorrow goes, it's going to be a cold day, though. Um, uh, we'll probably struggle to get out of the upper 30s, probably. All right? Uh, and then we'll rebound on Saturday very nicely, up to 50 degrees. So if there is any snow, it will be gone by Saturday. Uh, that, is, that is the good news on all of that. Here is the GFS, and it's trending warmer Saturday. Uh, and Sunday, we're even still warmer, uh, possibly near 60 in Jersey and up into the mid 50s on long island perhaps so uh should have some nice spring-like weather after we uh, deal with this storm here now uh, let's go look at the skies and yes i'm aware of the wind threat too that we have to look at as well um i'm going to use a different model for that on the windy.com model all right so this is the gfs you'll see the clouds we'll have plenty of clouds over us tomorrow and then we finally get rid of them saturday should be a nice clear day Sunday, also a sunny day, and look at that. Even Monday, a sunny day. So we're going to have uh, three sunny days in a row, maybe four, That's for, if you include Tuesday. So uh, we're going to have a lot of nice, sunny, uh, mild weather. Uh, so it won't, it won't be cold. It'll be uh, warm out as well. So that's uh, some good news. So uh, let's go uh, to the wind we're just going to look at this wind threat for uh, tomorrow again. Well, tomorrow morning mainly. Uh, it's mainly offshore, but some of the east end could get into this. You can see the strong wind offshore there. Um, if we go and we look at windy.com, let's go this way. Go to wind gusts here. And we'll use this the uses the European model. So you see it's going to get windy tonight. Uh, so that heavy rain uh, will, it will be wind driven, and then it could end as. A little wind-driven snow here it is in the morning you can see definitely kind of windy north uh north northeast wind gusting to 43 miles an hour uh and it still stays windy right all through the day here we are wind gusts still up to 42 so still gonna feel quite cold tomorrow uh it finally lets off a little bit as you get a little later in the afternoon with gusts into the 30s but it's still gonna be windy it's still gonna be cold but after that we're gonna have a much more spring-like weather uh, so that's going to wrap up this weather update. Take care and thank you for watching.